Tonight on Retro Gaming Night, we visit a haunted mansion and play Resident Evil. Hi there, I'm Mark and then Neil, and today we are playing Resident Evil on the Nintendo GameCube. The Resident Evil franchise has been around for many, many years and he's kind of the pioneer of survival horror games. You didn't really have many horror games anyway before Resident Evil. Resident Evil to me, even if you're playing the original on the PlayStation 1, is a game that stands the test of time. The GameCube remake is brilliant and it's absolutely worth playing. And I was saying to Mark earlier that if they put the GameCube remake or a remake of it on the Xbox One or the PS4, it would still look brilliant and beautiful, even despite its age. Yeah, definitely. Like You, you can't tell this game is uh, over 10 years, nearly 15 at this point, years old. Um, you know, they, they did a great job at the time, and even now it still holds up today. It doesn't mm. look like an old game. Alpha team is um, obviously, the backgrounds are still pre-rendered. Um, they're not high def for the because the game you can do that. Uh, but, you know, the quality is almost there. Um, but this game is total remake, top to bottom. So, intro scene, uh, gone is the old black and white, uh, Dawn of the Dead style, weirdo zombie thing. With the poorly, poor actors they hired. The poor boys had the original. <laughs> Worth well, checking out if you've never seen it. Yeah, it's Worth hilarious. checking out for the bad acting and voice syncing. Uh, so it's a bit of a shame that's not there, but they've, they've redone it all. Um, so we're going to skip past this. You can watch this when you play the game. Um, but here we'll get into the game. The original Resident Evil on the PlayStation 1 was also well known for its terrible, terrible voice acting, where you'd, you'd hear the disc loading halfway through sentences, and so you'd, you'd, you'd have slight gaps between the, the conversations, and the voice acting was just awful, maybe down to a translation issue, maybe down to that they didn't have the money to hire decent voice actors, or people didn't, maybe didn't take voice acting like that too seriously back then, because there was nothing else like this on the PlayStation 1. Right. Right. Yeah. But then the girls she played were like arcade basic yeah. action games, and this was brilliant, it was a long game for its time, it was Jill, no. the first ever survival horror game, Don't and obviously had lots of story and action and horror elements to it, and was absolutely time. amazing, was the brilliant, game? brilliant game. It, it sold the PlayStation to a lot of people at the time, because you'd not no. seen an adult game before, Jill, or adult, uh, with gore and horror like it. this. You know, people had gone from Sonic the Hedgehog and Mario, then the seeing this shown um, at E3 and other places. Right. It just looked Here amazing at the time. But uh, obviously the voice acting also created um, a lot of comedy as well, like the dual sandwich. Yes, and uh, so, uh, the many mispronunciations the, the characters made. Yeah, the, uh, the master of unlocking, you know, there, there's a lot of comedy in there and they have kept some of those lines. Mm. Um, but yeah, the voice acting's all been redone, character models all uh, high polygon models now. And obviously the, the games themselves spawn the successful, I suppose, but I'd say successful film franchise, which has got many of the characters from the games in it. Uh, Jill Valentine, Barry Burton, both appearing in the in the films. Not quite like their game versions. Um, in the Resident Evil series, the game, the original starts out with the stars Alpha and Bravo team are sent at different times to investigate this mansion. One team disappears, the other team is sent to investigate. You take part in one of those teams, your helicopter lands and the pilot chickens away and flies off like a little wimpy is and you're left there in this mysterious mansion to investigate with its monsters, its secrets, its traps and all its locked doors and obviously it added this sort of intrigue and mystery to the game as well obviously trying to find their way around this mansion and I mean as you can see here like we've said it's a GameCube game but look at the lighting effects, look at the backgrounds, look at the lightning that's just gone up there it just looks amazing you wouldn't think this was on the GameCube or a, a system that was around that time just looks brilliant. I mean, I'm playing yeah. as Jill Valentine right now, which is probably considered to be the easy character because um, she has more slots, she has the ability to pick locks. Barry is with her constantly throughout the game um, to aid and assist in her efforts. Chris doesn't have that. Uh, Chris, for some reason, despite his huge muscles, doesn't have the ability to carry more things than Jill does in other pockets, I guess. But uh, obviously, there's a harder mode and an easier mode. Show some of Jill's gameplay right now. But, uh, the, if you played the original game on the PlayStation, you're probably wondering, besides the new graphics, uh, 
why is this worth playing? Well, they've actually remade it. So the items are in different locations. Um, they've added extra bits to the mansion. They've added a bigger outside areas to the mansion. Um, the actual game has changed quite a bit. So uh, there's actually a few hours of extra gameplay in there. Oh, he's not dying. Um, the zombies are tougher now as well. Not in order to be in poor. Um, you've got defensive weapons, like you've got a knife that you can stick in their head as like a last ditch effort. Oh, he's not dead. Well, he's not dead again, no. I guess. Uh, you still do have the tank controls, um, but they're part of Resident Evil. You need to have them to have a, a Resident Evil game. Oh, there's blood coming out of him there, so I believe he's dead. Yeah. Right, let's go and uh, report back to, to Mr. Burton outside. So obviously with the game as well, there's no kind of running around, jumping, jumping upside down and shooting people. You can't move and shoot, which you can in, say, Dead Space, for example. Um, what is it? So it meant that you had to stand your ground and fight or retreat, or retreat to a safe spot. So in this very claustrophobic environment, you did have times where you weren't firing a bullet, you were too close, and you're going to get nibbled on by those cheeky zombies, which Barry has dealt with with three shots from a Magnum. That's, that's a poor excuse for a Magnum. Though. That's a pretty big gun he's got. Yeah, it is a big gun. Um, I think the bullet would get bored before it would leave the barrel <laughs> if you fired that gun. Killed by this thing. Skip this cutscene. I don't want to ruin anything for you. Uh, here's, here's Barry with his overly huge gun. You know, if you play Resident Evil 4, which most people probably have, um, it's a lot slower paced than that, it's all about the puzzles. This game is probably the best one in terms of puzzles because they're not that abstract. Once you get onto the latest games like Resident Evil Code Veronica, they become extremely abstract and you start wondering why people uh, hide a diamond in the ground which opens a door that gives you the two guns to open up the lock, to so get the car keys to start the car. I would hate to work in this mansion. It'd be, it'd be like, I can't even get around the mansion to go to the toilet. I need the spade key with the diamond hat and, you know, whoever yeah. built it, you'd be like, I'm leaving. This is awful. I can't leave the house. Jill, don't be looking. But that's all part of Resident Evil's charms in just how silly it can get at times. And there's a lot of people, the again, the older gamers who have played Resident Evil 5, played Resident Evil 6, myself included, wasn't too keen. Resident Evil 5 wasn't bad, Resident Evil 6 I hated. Um, and you kind of wonder why wouldn't Capcom make a game like this again? Because the, the problem the developers and publishers said, well, they just decided that survival horror games weren't cool and they didn't sell. And obviously Capcom would probably release a Resident Evil remake in this style, that looked this good. And then they'd be shocked, yeah, flabbergasted that it would yeah. sell. You're like, what's wrong with you? Just make a remake. That's what people want, that's what they're asking for. Well, everyone's asking for a Resident Evil 2 remake. Um, why they've never made it, who knows. Uh, this is Capcom, the company that releases games that no one wants and doesn't release games everyone does want. Mm. Um, Search the hall by spinning around in a circle yeah. then, again. <laughs> there. It's all fine, got it. Don't you worry. Jill. No, nothing. Skip that. But, uh, you know, this is a brilliant game. It's still got the horrors in there. Um, so Jill, doesn't get the, uh, Jill gets the lockpick, Chris does not, because he's a moron. Essentially, yeah. he's all muscles, no brain. So, Thanks. Chris does not get that. So he has to fumble around for extra keys, which is something that was in both games. But there's a very interesting t uh, game aspect in this that was not in the original. That unless you blow a zombie's head off, its corpse is going to remain in the house. And if you don't go back and burn it, or at least blow its head off with a shotgun, in a few minutes or a few extra runs around the house, it's going to get up and it's going to be faster and bigger and tougher. And your pistol is not going to be enough to take it down. So the other thing is now is we have complete freedom in the mansion. I mean, Barry has kind of said, well, you'll go this way and I'll go that way. There's a door here I can go in. I could go back where I came from. I could even go upstairs. You can go out the front of the mansion. I could go out the front of the mansion. Let's go and see if we can just <laughs> run off and leave poor Barry Burton to uh, fend for himself. Let's go check. I'm leaving. I'm off. I'm going for the shops. Ah, dog! And uh, nice little surprises of that. I mean... Well, no, the, okay, the, the, that was not in the original. No. The dog, the, in the original, the dog put its head through the door and you basically slammed it shut. Ah, oh, I think you're, you're mutt. But um, the, the, the horrors are still in this game because, you know, you expected the dog not to come out and it did. And they've changed up a lot of things, so... I've got a lot of ammunition already. Like everyone knows the classic jo uh, dogs jumping <laughs> through the windows, that has changed as well. And they've done that throughout the game. Ah, nine out of ten dogs prefer Joel Valentine. Get off! <laughs> I, I, this is a perfect example. I did not have the ammunition to deal with that dog, or nor any health. Most action games around that area, you'd shoot it five thousand times in the face, and you'd be fine. If we, you know, look at my inventory, I've got no ammunition at all. I have a puny little knife, which is 
I'm going to do the job against zombies. No, so if you've played the original, you can play this again and it's almost like a new game. And as we see with this first door, it's locked and an emblem of sword. Now obviously you have no idea what that meant then, but there are various keys that unlock various doors in the mansions. You have to actually spin the key around to investigate the key. And the keys will have symbols on them, such as swords, armours, shields and helmets. And those will obviously unlock different parts of the mansion itself. Now, if you're looking to play this, obviously the GameCube, um, but you can also play it on the Wii, on the Wii U. Uh, the Wii had a re-released version. Um, it is exactly the same as the GameCube one, no differences there, uh, just in a Wii coloured box. Uh, but yeah, pick it up, it's easy to find, it's cheap, you can play it on loads of different consoles. Um, it's definitely one that you should get. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I think we should leave it there now as you've got no... Nothing to use. Yeah, I don't think this zombie, <laughs> I, I'm not going to dignify this zombie with a fight. Look at him, he's lumbering, he's, he's after Jill's chest. He's not, that's not a zombie, that's just a, a naughty man. Ah! Uh, save me, Joel Valentine. Boosh! And that, yeah, and that's the extra weapon there. So. Yep, there we go. Which, as you can see, hasn't done much to stop no. it. So I'm going to run off. <laughs> and uh, we're going to run off too. So uh, hope you like the episode. Make sure you hit the like button. And uh, we'll be back next week. Bring me ammunition. <laughs> Did you enjoy that video? Then hit that like button. Why not subscribe as well and get the latest videos, news and competitions? Don't forget to check out casuallyhardcore.com where you can buy hundreds of video game shirts and geek clothing or make your own shirts with worldwide shipping also available. Until next time, stay casually hardcore.